All right, this is the gun lap for the re-election, so give it to me straight. Well, there are no major defectors for campaign contributions, dear. The war chest is in excellent shape. Good. Very good. What is our image, Willa? We've programmed the latest poll, Senator. Lewis Harris gave us a random pattern sampling with peer group anchorage. Gallup, a saturization vertical syndrome study with horizontal personality backstopping. And NORC ran an ethnic study with racial and religious breakdown, status group compensation, and socioeconomic balancing. Yes, good. But am I winning or losing? Losing, Senator. Losing. But why? The computers had me ahead last December. It checks out on both computers, plus the one we have as a safety valve backstopping cross-check. If the elections were held today, you would lose by 1.846 percentile. 1.846 percentile. Oh, yes. <laughs> the computers don't lie. Isn't there a possible breakthrough with any of the peer groups? How are we doing on the Jewish vote? The senator's solid with the Jews, Mrs. Hennington. The Negroes are the trouble spot. The Negroes. I'm the best friend those people have in Washington. The computers indicate a sharp decline immediately after your law and order speech last winter. All right, all right. Now, let's see if we can come up with some ideas here. First. How do we retrieve the lost ne black vote? Gil, why don't we accuse the CIA of a racially discriminatory hiring policy? They have no Negroes, except on a menial level, you know. Certain, Belinda. I mean, that may be it. I'm positive, but I'll check it out with our man over at personnel. Good. Whoever they select will be the best known spy since 007. And now stand. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do hereby swear to uphold the laws of the United States of America. To uphold the laws of the United States of America. And those laws governing the Central Intelligence Agency. What do you see in this ink plot? I see a man. If I were undercover as a political or economic officer in an embassy and I was questioned about racism in the United States, I'd point out that they also have racial and religious troubles, that a thing like that isn't resolved overnight, and that our country is firmly behind racial progress and great strides are being made here. And so on behalf of the director of our agency, I'd like to offer congratulations on completing our tough preliminary training course. After weeks of physical and psychological testing, you 10 men have survived the more than 40 already sworn in, who in turn were selected from a careful screening and security check of hundreds. You men, therefore, represent the best of your race. 
The survivors of our regular training course that begin tomorrow will be the first of your race to join the finest intelligence and espionage fraternity in the history of mankind. I must emphasize, however, that you are by no means agents as yet. Now, the selecting out process continues right up until graduation day. So uh, keep on your toes, keep your noses clean, and I hope to congratulate you on joining the team at the end of the training course. Thank you. Well, ain't a guru to be a spy? <laughs> right on. <laughs> really? Yeah. We the first group to be spooked yeah. with a B.I.A. <laughs> hey, man, you know how much yeah. this scotch costs in the commissary? Three dollars. Mm. Shiv ass regal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cheap overseas, man. Yeah, and, and rent-free housing overseas, too. Hey, you went to Fisk, didn't you? I'm from Howard. Say, you a fret man? Yeah, man. Awful. No kidding, baby. So bad. Oh, okay. Hey, just get it over there. <laughs> Say, did, didn't we meet last year at the pan relays? Oh, man, yeah. At that party at the motel. <laughs> We got it made now. Yeah, but don't forget what Carstairs said. Dig, they can still flunk us out. Yeah, I don't think Carstairs would be uptight if we all flunked out. And you know that PT instructor Calhoun hates us. Mm. Hey, man, it doesn't matter how they feel. You know, the word is integration from the top. Now, some of us have got to make it, and we're it. You just have to understand the theory of tokenism. Look, they grade on a curve. None of us get too eager. Gentlemen, see for everybody, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Black you got a problem? Four more seconds. As you can see, gentlemen, there is one quick way to fail this course. Then we take the two wires, we place them here, and we crimp them together, making the connection positive. We take the switch then, and we throw it. All right, we'll operate the ignition by remote control. Always use those materials which are easily accessible to any citizen of the country in which you are operating. Okay. How long before this experiment in integration ends? There are only six left in the group, General. And? The top-ranking man academically will fail the physical requirements. He's no athlete. Uh, another figure is to flunk this week's exam. But one might make it. You assured me two weeks ago no one would survive. Somehow I forgot Freeman even existed. He has a way of fading into the background. But he's been among the top three in academics and first in athletic training. Yes, they do make good athletes. Which one is he? That one. Come in. Hey, Freeman. Hey. Come on in. Listen, we're going into Washington. You want to come along with us? No, got some studying to do. Oh, they've been letting us in town for a month now, man, and you ain't been out of here yet. 
I'm going nuts in here. Well, maybe next time. Maybe you got to cool it. Cool it? Mm -hmm. Cool it. If you weren't so eager to please the white man and send the grading curve up, there'd be three times as many of us here now. What kind of Tom are you, anyway? Same as you, I guess. Except that I don't try to have it both ways. And you better watch what you say about white folks. Behind their back, this place could be bugged. Are you calling me a Tom, man? Well, none of us would pick for our militancy now, will we? Now, why don't you go away and let me alone? Why don't you join the team, man? Team? Man, I'm not playing any games. Man, you just don't belong. I think you'd be happier with a mop in your hands. Like your mama. Let's step outside now. No. No. You don't want to step outside with me. Because, baby, I would kick your ass. Uh, a glass of glassy. And uh, would you give the young lady down the end of the bar whatever she's drinking? Yes. This is from the fellow at the end of the bar. You looking for some action? Yeah. How much? Fifteen and five. Five of the hotel. Yeah. And all night? Not on Saturday, baby. You remind me of someone. Oh, really? Who? A queen. Look, baby, all you got to do is give me my bread. You don't have to talk no trash. No, really. What kind of queen? Queen from Dahomey. Daho? What the hell is Dahomey? Dahomey was a great nation in Africa. Africa? No, really. I've got a book with a picture of you. You look just like her. I'll give you the book. Sure. No. You two could be twins, except that she um, uh, wore her hair different, you know. Huh. 
It was kind of like natural, you know, the way it grew. You, uh... You look good like that. Look, honey, if you a hairdresser, maybe I can get you a boy. <laughs> no, no, no. You'll do. Good. Then why don't you just be a trick and stop talking all that shit about queens and kinky hair? Okay, okay. Listen, can I uh, get you another drink? Mm-hmm. You really got a book with a picture in it that looked like me. I'll bring you the book. When? The next time I see you. Right. Me. Right. Mr. Freeman, you will stay for additional instruction. Mr. Freeman, I don't think you people belong in our outfit. I don't have anything against the rest of the group. They, they just don't measure up. But you, I don't like. I don't understand, sir. Well, I don't like your phony humility, and I don't like your style. Now, this is a team for men, not misplaced cotton pickers. Yes, sir. Stow the as a boss. It doesn't work on me. I'll give you a chance. Just go up to the office and resign. Otherwise, we fight. Now, your black belt match is my own, so you won't be able to wind brutality, equal opportunity. You people claim you want. Mr. Su, Shinba. No. There ain't no rest for the weary. Son, are you all right? Hey, baby, don't look so sad. Be back in a month. Well, at least we won't have to stay in a hotel. They let us start commuting in two weeks, and I'm going to get us a pad. You know, I don't mind this place too much. It kind of reminds me of that hotel off campus. <laughs> well, listen, what would happen to the Cook County Department of Welfare if the star casework or miswork tomorrow. Casework supervisor. Honey. Okay, okay, Miss Big Time. What would happen? You mean play okay? Yeah. 
I found a beautiful restaurant last week. Ooh, do they have shark fin soup? No, it's a West Indian restaurant. Oh, shark fin soup with peas and rice, huh? Yes. Hmm. Hope they stay open late. <sighs> They've all been eliminated except Freeman, sir. Will he make it? I think so. He has written an oral finals this week. Security? Checks out so far. Routine security checks on the training barracks and checks on his activities in Washington. Of course, he's only been allowed out of the training area for the last two months. Anything suspicious? Uh, no, sir. He checked into a colored hotel, spent his weekends in the ghetto, mostly on U Street. That's pretty tough territory. Yes, sir, but he seems at home there. He grew up in a neighborhood much like it in Chicago. How did he get through college? Athletic scholarship. That figures. Also explains the Calhoun incident. Sir, in fairness to Calhoun, Freeman's been studying judo privately for years. Politics? Apolitical. He was involved in civil rights activity as a student, but nothing pink or radical. Men or women? Women. No hint of homosexuality. Developed a liaison with a prostitute on U Street. Also has a girlfriend in Chicago. Apparently, he's known her since they were college students. Why don't you run a final 6'9 security check? It's already in progress. It should be finished in a few days. Uh, run up a dossier on this uh, whore and give it to me. Uh, leave Freeman's file. Secure security is in. Yes, sir. Figured out something for him to do? Yes, sir. Well, like it or not, looks as if we're integrated. Do you know if he takes any dope? Heroin, LSD, marijuana, pill? No. He don't even smoke. He ain't no junkie, baby. He's have a tendency to boast. Brag about himself. He don't talk about himself at all. Most regular tricks want to tell you the story of their whole lives. They gamble. If you do, I don't know about it. Took him to a joint one night. Craps, poker. If he get in, I get a cut. But he just stand around and look. What'd you say? File? Uncontrollable temper? Temper? No. He'll never lose his cool. But people don't give him no shit. Huh? Right. How do you mean? He's one of them quiet kind of cats that people just don't mess with. Like that time I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. The cat that owned it owed me some bread. Started to get off the wall about it. Then he check out Freeman. Just standing there, quiet, digging the action. And the cat, bad, make two of Freeman. Check out Freeman. Look at me. Give me my bread. Thought about that that night. He ain't my man or nothing like that, but I know that if I got in trouble, he'd be in it. I think he'd be real bad once he get going, too. What about his sexual habits? Huh? You think he might be homosexual? No. <laughs> You're wasting your time there. What is the guiding principle of an underground guerrilla army? To live off the country. To rely on nothing in the way of logistics or supplies which cannot be obtained easily and simply, whether legally or illegally. What happens in an underground organization when the first or second in command are killed or captured? Each man is trained to handle positions three steps ahead of him in grade. The operations officer takes over, and the others move up two grades. It's fine. That concludes our oral examination, and let me congratulate you on being the first Negro officer in the Central Intelligence Agency. We've programmed your uh, aptitudes into our computer personnel system. You ought to be our new top secret reproduction center section chief. What brings you all the way down here to the third sub-basement? The general needs someone to give a guided tour for a bunch of senators. You think you can handle it? Yeah. Yeah, I think I can handle it. Good. Senators are in the general's office now. Okay. 
Raymond, you don't like me, do you? What makes you say that? You never seem very friendly when you bring top secret documents to the office. Sometimes it seems like you don't even know I'm around. Oh, well, it's just that I'm preoccupied with my duties. I just want to make good here, that's all. You're very ambitious, aren't you? Yeah. I want to be the best reproduction section chief they've ever had. But you are. Everyone says you're doing much better than expected. Well, I certainly hope so. Well, gentlemen, our Mr. Freeman, he'll conduct your tour. Yes, Senator Barton, Senator Chambers, oh, yeah. Senator Wilson. Freeman, How do you do? right this way, gentlemen. General, I'm delighted. A member of your personal staff already. Now, that's integration in action. You know, that's not a bad idea. Put him on my personal staff. If he doesn't bungle this tour, we'll keep him up here. Yes, sir, we can put him out in reception. All our visitors could see we're integrated. Not coming back to Washington anymore, Dad. I'm getting married. <laughs> the doctor or a lawyer? The doctor. He seems like a nice cat. Sorry, but I'm not getting any younger. And I'm not in your bag, right? I always knew it had to happen someday. It's all right, baby. Baby. Joy, let's say goodbye right. Dan, I'm certainly pleased with the way you've fitted into the agency. How long have you been with us now? A bit more than five years, sir. And you've done well. You're a credit to your race. Thank you, sir. Hard work, Dan. No shortcuts. Other minorities have pulled themselves up by the bootstraps? Yes, sir. You're a perfect example, Dan. Fine, natural athlete. Well, no denying your people are great in sports. Well, thank you, sir, but uh, we still have a long way to go. Right. There's still a cultural gap to be closed. It's a question of evolution. Of course, it'll take generations. In the meantime, you people must earn respect by serving the country. Freeman, you people must serve. General, I want to serve. I don't understand. Your comments last Friday afternoon convinced me I could make a real contribution. So I'm going back to Chicago and work with my people and uh, show them the way. Now, don't be hasty, Freeman. Perhaps you should think this thing over. After all, you do set an example for your people to follow. Well, I realize that, General, and uh, I have thought about it. But I've decided to take this position with the Social Service Foundation and uh, help my people help themselves. Use what I've learned here. Well, we'll be sorry to see you go, Dan. Take all the time you need to phase out here. Be sure to let us know how things are going in Chicago. All right, sir, I will. Carstairs, bring in Freeman's file.
Freeman's leaving us for a do-gooder outfit in Chicago. More money? What else? Check out this foundation he's to work for. Saturation and depth security check. And Freeman? He's safe enough. A routine surveillance if the foundation is clean. Phone tap, random and regular checks on his activities and associates. I'll tell X the Chicago office today. Dan, we really got our work cut out for us. Some of the baddest young dudes in Chicago, if not the country, operating right here in our territory, the King Cobras. I used to be a Cobra. <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah. They used to call me Turk. That gang goes back in 30 years. Listen, do they still hang out down at that, uh, what is it, Pete's? Yeah, you can find them there any night. Except now they own the place. Miss Duggan? Oh, Mr. Freeman, hi. Why don't you join me? Good. Listen, that looks good. It is delicious. You want to try some? Mm-hmm. Miss Duggan, how's your son Shorty doing? Oh, Shorty's doing just fine. He got a job now, making good money. In fact, he just bought me a color television set. Well, I hear that he's not only running numbers, pushing drugs, Hey, he's hooked. No, he ain't no real junkie. Sure, he shoots up now and then. But I don't think he got no more than about a twenty or thirty dollar a week habit. And that ain't no habit. Well, did you ever think that he uh, could end up in jail? Not unless somebody turned the heat on in the precinct. And then I can't hardly see why they'd be after Shorty because he ain't into it that much. Shorty ever think about finishing at least high school? No. He don't want no parts of school. You know how them teachers are. Well, without an education, what's he going to do? Mr. Freeman, you know. Ain't nothing out there for us. But right out there in those streets where Shorty is. How you doing, Shorty? Hey, Ted. I just saw your mother inside the restaurant. Yeah, I was just saw my way down there, lay some bread on. Shorty, the word is on Vine that uh, you're not making your pay off to the cops. That's just the rumor, Ted. You uh, mind if I give you a little advice? No, go ahead. Why don't you just quit dealing all together? Oh, man, you know I can't do that, Ted. It's survival. Do you ever stop to think what would happen in these streets if we cut off the flow of drugs altogether? White folks control your neighborhood through drugs and you dealing. So what you gonna do now? Give me a sermon? Daniel! No, no, no sermon, Shorty. I just thought I'd ask.
next time, so shall it go. We have us a piece, too. Shut up! And listen, the big time badass cobras. Popping away at the pigs from the rooftops during the riots last summer. Oh, yeah. I know what you was into. With 22 rifles and pistols. Did about as much damage as a mosquito to an elephant's ass. What'd you expect to hit from that range with those weapons at night? You might as well have thrown the damn pieces at the pigs. You really want to mess with Whitey? Well, I can show you how. I can show you how. <laughs> You twist the wires to make contact and throw the switch. Come on with it. Come on with it. Bring it on here. Easy. Easy now. Take your time. Anything, baby. Touch it off. Get it. Get it. Get it. All right. I'll operate the ignition by remote control. Man, anybody can make explosives like this. Okay, Willie. You go order some plastic detonators from uh, Marshall Fields. <laughs> Everything on this table can be obtained easily from a drugstore, a hardware store, or medical supply house. If we can get sophisticated equipment, we'll use it. But we don't rely on it. We live off the land. We match technology with spontaneity and improvisation. Men against machines, brains against computers. Now, if you don't think it can work, you check out Algeria, Kenya, Korea, and Iran. Can you dig it? I understand that. That's cool. You found out in the country how difficult range estimation is. But in the city, the problem simplified. A city block is 250 yards north to south, 150 yards east to west. The lampposts are standard 30 yards. So we got reference points all over. Right. And since the buildings act as a funnel for the wind, you can fire on zero windage. Now, run it down to the sniper teams, and I'll be in my pad all night if you need me. Cool, Terry. Okay. How's the new job coming along? It's, uh, all right. All right. The word's out in the grapevine how much money you're making. Well, nothing's changed about the gig except the bread. But I used to know you when you thought making money was obscene. Making a contribution was your thing. Well, there's no reason why I can't do both. That's what I used to try to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. <laughs> Since the war and poverty, all the social workers are making money. Everyone except poor. <laughs> now, that's the old day. But you have changed.
Maybe I should have waited. Well, too late to talk about that now. You already have a husband. Yeah. After a fashion. He goes his way, and I go mine. By the way, Dawson's back in California. Dawson? How are you doing? <laughs> okay. This is Peter Dawson, Anena, Sylvia. Oh, yeah? I came down to see you. I came down to see you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have a drink. Can you get over with us someday? Right. Well, if you can, okay? Come on, girls. All right. Your turn. You always offer to pay me like the 50 you owe me when we're about to be stuck up. Because I'm good to you. Trust me. <coughs> hey, listen. Hey, uh, you're pretty, uh... Okay. What do you have? Uh, cognac. So how you been, dummy? <laughs> okay. Joy tells me that you were uh, in California? Yeah, I conducted a 15-week seminar on inner-city riot control. What's that? Well, it has to do with the Chicago Police Department's approach to street gangs. <laughs> and they sent you? Oh, who better? Five-year warlord of the Apaches? Only. Oh, yeah. mm. I'll tell you, this uh, is an ex-hoodlum <laughs> turn cop. Here's to uh, old friends we discovered. And the new ones. Tell me about this uh, new job. Next stage of your training program is to learn how to steal. <laughs> yes, sir, I know you're all experts in stealing from your black brothers and sisters. Now you will learn how to steal from the enemy. Remember, a black man with a mop tray or broom in his hand can go damn near anywhere in this country and a smiling black man is invisible. The president of Chicago Edison's collective pipes. Stud, you will rip off the president's pipes while he is in his office. I want to talk to you, Willie. The brothers tell me you're right. Yeah. Good. We need a propagandist. So you're the Minister of Information. I want you to set up a group 
and uh, use whoever you want. Okay, what do you want? Like uh, some posters, music, poetry? Anything. Just as long as you talk to the people in the language that they understand. Well, I know about six of the cats I can use. You know, it's a lot of waste of talent, the Cobras. Good, let's use it. And give me an outline in two weeks? Mm. One week, man. I ain't no problem. Beautiful. I understand you're still registered at the university. Well, you know I gotta take a few courses each semester, man. Keep that bread coming from home. You ever intend to get a degree? <laughs> you know, what do I need with a status symbol? That's all it is to you. For a black man in this country? I mean, now what else is it? You know my grandmother learned to read? No, huh? Along with me. You remember those reading premises? Dick and Jane? Yeah. When I first got into those books, my grandmother used to wait for me to come home from school so she could help me with my reading. And uh, she would follow the whole thing, line for line. And one day, I don't know why, I just uh, read a line wrong. And I realized she couldn't read. And I went into the bathroom and I locked the door. And I cried. And every day after that, I ran home so that my grandmother could help me read. And, man, the first time I saw her really read, Get your education, boy, she used to say. Because that's the only thing the white man can take away from you. And she was right. You know, I can't figure you, man. What's the figure? I mean, what are you in this for? You want uh, power, you want revenge, you know? What is it? It's simple, Willie. I just want to be free. How about you? So do I. And I hate white folks. Hate white folks? This is not about hate white folks. It's about love and freedom enough to die or kill for it if necessary. Now you're gonna need more than hate to sustain you when this thing begins. Now if you feel that way, you're no good to us, and you're no good to yourself. You ever kill a man, Willie? No. I have, in Korea. And when you spill a man's guts in the gutter, you see how fast he disappears, unless you like killing, and I don't think you will. Now, some of the Cobras will. Stud will. Why Stud? Because he's a killer. He doesn't know it yet, but he is. I have another job for you, Willie. What's that? We need money. So I have a bank job case. The only thing about it is I can't have the job connected with the Cobras. <laughs> How are you going to do that? We use <clears throat> Red Beans, Benny Rooster, Paul Money, JT, Johnny, and Tom. And you lead the team. All the yellow niggas, right? Look, man, I am tired of that. I am not passing. I am black. Do you hear me, man? Do you understand? I am black. I'm a nigga. Do you understand me? I was born black. I live black. And I'm going to die probably because I'm black. Because some cracker that knows I'm black better than you, nigga, is probably going to put a bullet in the back of my head. Stick up. Get your hands up. Move. Get on the wall. Move. Get on the wall. Get up. Get up. Now, move. Get your hands up. Hands up.
Chicago police are seeking six heavily armed men after a daring daylight robbery today of a southwest Chicago bank. Bank authorities estimate the theft to be in excess of $300,000. The men have been described by eyewitnesses as six Caucasian males between the age of 20 to 30. Police warn that these men are armed and dangerous. Recruitment and training group ready? Had their final exams last week. Transportation set? They make two moves before they reach their final destination. Check for tails along the way. Pick up instructions as they go along. Logistics? There'll be $500 in new identification papers waiting for them when they reach the other end. After that, they live off the street. And when they get there? Locate and identify a gang like the Cobras. Set up training, a chain of command, organization, and a very tight discipline. And? No junk. Good. I want the men assigned to Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Detroit, New Orleans, and Los Angeles to move out within 10 days. Man, they got some bad brothers in New Orleans. You got that ready. And stagger the rest of them over the next month. There'll be monthly reports until they make contact and weekly reports after that. Now, if they get busted in the street hassle, they recruit in prison and we replace them. Any questions? Go, Malcolm. Go to the basket. Hey. Hey, man. I just got off duty, so I just thought about this. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, Joy. Hi, Pete. Hi, How are you? Okay. How's the family? Oh, just fine. I'm just good, fine. Good. Hey, hey, freebie. I think my oldest boy's gonna be an athlete. Come on. Oh yeah, man. You remember that move I used to make coming off the baseline? Yeah. Well, he's got it, man. He's got it. The head and shoulder fake and everything. <laughs> man, I didn't teach him that move. You know, I went to the game the other day, and there it was. Reminded me of myself 20 years ago. I'd like to see that. Next time you go to the game, take me along. That's a bet. Okay. How's Arlene? Uh, just fine. Uh, she's back in school at nights, and uh, she got a master's last year. Now she's going for a PhD. Any chance of you two getting back together again? I don't think so. I mean, it's not easy uh, being the wife of a cop. Say, uh, <clears throat> hey, Jug's in town. How about us catching a set? The three of us? Like old times? Hey, I'm sorry, but I have really got to go home. Oh, boo. <laughs> Listen, we'll make it early next week, OK? OK. Can't cut it loose, can you? No. And she knows me, too. Hey. Have a good time. Mm-hmm. For me? Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, let me get this coat on. We go down and maybe we catch two sets. OK. Then we have a nightcap and a late dinner at the avenue. Mm -hmm. and then we've cut out all this fooling around and go see these two chicks that I came over to tell you about before I found out the joy was Ah, uh, yes. Splendid. <laughs> What happens in an underground organization when the first and second in command are either killed or captured? Daddy? 
Each man is trained to handle positions three steps ahead of him in grade. The operations officer moves up and takes command, and everyone else moves up two grades. Good. Now, we're almost ready. We ain't no junkies. From now on, everybody gonna think you are. You put needle marks in your arms and you keep them fresh. And no pig is gonna bust you for the things that we be doing as long as you got those tracks. All right, man. That's really hip, man. During the daytime, we be nodding. Nighttime, we get out there and do it. We are gonna get our own. Stop begging for crumbs. I know. What we got now is a colony. But what we want to create is a new nation. In order to do that, we got to pay a different kind of dues. Freedom dues. Yeah, right on. Now, according to Mr. Charlie, we have never paid any dues. You dig those plantation movies on television? Yeah. Yeah. No chains. No whips. Oh, yeah, Bunch of happy darkies mm -hmm. just waiting on Master Charlie and his family and digging it. Digging it. Yeah. <laughs> like it's fun. Like it's fun. <laughs> lordy, lordy, lordy. It's Colonel Beauregard come home from the war. My faithful retainer, George. The war is over. And we lost. You're not a slave anymore, George. You're free. Free, master? Is that bad, master? I go on to die? You're free, George. You can leave the plantation. I want to stay with you. But I can't pay you, George. The oh. carpetbaggers mortgage the plantation. Oh, don't let that worry you none. Why, well, I wouldn't know what to do with no money. And don't let that mortuary thing worry you either. Everything's gonna be all right. Bless you, George. George, sit down, George. Master, master, master. You have just played out the American dream. And now we're going to turn it into a nightmare.
please open the door. Please open the door. Pigs. Will you open the door? This one's off duty, lady. Can't you read? Take the next one. Now, let's see what we got. Oh, wow, man, what a ripple. You know this gonna make the headlines. No, it won't hit the papers at all. Might give some other people ideas, but this place will be swarming with CIA and FBI. We go underground? No. They'll be looking for everybody except us. You see, this took brains and guts, which we don't have, right? Yeah. <laughs> Move it out. Some of the boys is one eight for the draft, man. Now, what are we gonna do if they get caught? Go underground? Yeah. If they can beat it, they should. But we recruit every non vet we can get. Right now, I'm trying to recruit Dawson as a double agent. Turk, you really think we can win? In guerrilla warfare, the winning is in not losing. When you sleep on the floor, you can't fall out of bed than what we try to do, man. Fight Whitey to a standstill. Force him to make a choice between the two things which he seems to dig most of all. There is no way that the United States can police the world and keep us on our ass, too, unless we cooperate. When we revolt, we reduce it to a simple choice. Whitey finds out he can't make either. Cobras is ready. But what about the other brothers and sisters out there on the streets? Their choice is when we start. If they don't follow our program and turn us into the cops, we lose in a week. But if they support us, yeah. then it's hit and run, harass and hound, and we can paralyze this country. Yeah, right. Training has started already in nine cities. Five groups is combat ready. Plus us. Right. And by next summer, we should be able to hit the 10 largest urban complexes in the United States. She.
up shot a kid. <sighs> Looks like it could be trouble. Well, don't get involved here. Gotta go. Don't worry about it. Things look. Not good. You're blowing your time. Anything we can do to help? Just what you've been doing. Talk to the kids, tell them to cool it. They'll listen to you and Perk. Hey, Perk, what about the kids? Everybody's pretty uptight, dude. Hey, look, Perk, uh, go down to the drugstore, call up the office, tell the night girl to round up all of the street workers and get them down here quick. And then join me, all right? You got it, Dan. Thank you. Wait a minute, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let me go, man. Let me go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen to me. Listen to me, man. What, are, what is this going to do, man? You got a wife that's worried about you. You got a job, and if you get busted, you're going to lose it. You want a few people around here with a job to lose. Oh, man, this has got to stop sometime or somewhere. We ain't animals. Come on, y'all just break it on up. Break it on up. Break it on up. All right, now, come on. Let's break start moving it, it out of here. Come on, just go home. Come on. Go on home. Go on in, bro. It's all over. <laughs> Looks like it's cooling now. Yeah, I think you're right. I should be able to pull my men out in another hour. I can pull all my men out. Oh, man, it was going to be all right. Okay, let's pull it back. Hold it.
We'll be here, Terry. The boys ready? Been ready. Come on. Mellow. Primary and secondary targets. Check them twice a day. Weapons. Oil and ready. Everything ready. We have to wait. I mean, what for? Start who is the man? Well, you the man. And if they get me? Do daddy. And? Me, pretty Willie, and so on down the line. So? We go when you say go. Yeah. I'll check you tonight. Right. since you've been in bed? Not since the riot started. That was three nights ago, man. Yeah, I know. Catnap when I can. When did the National Guard come in? Late last night. All white. I noticed. Yeah, the people didn't dig it when they woke up this morning and uh, found the troops were here. What do you think they'll do? I can't see them trying to fight the army. They didn't mind fighting the police? Yeah. I've never seen him like that. Maybe that badge has put distance between you and them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot. The pigs over here and the people over there. And never the twain shall meet, huh? Hey, man, I grew up down here, too. And I know these people. Now, there were some good people out there in the streets the last few nights. Not just hoodlums, like they say in the newspapers. In a scene like this, anybody can get involved. But that's only going to make it worse. We have to maintain law and order, or we might as well be back in the jungles. <laughs> Dollars, the ghetto is a jungle, always has been. Understand? You cannot cage people like animals and not expect them to fight back someday. It has always been an army occupation here, with police badges and uniforms. Huh? You and me, a cop and a social worker, we are keepers of this goddamn zoo. The streets have to be safe. Safe for who? You're here to protect property, not lives. Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? You worked hard to get what you got, didn't you? And you want to keep it just like I do? Bullshit. Listen, you think because you got a badge and I got a couple of degrees, that makes a difference? Do you know what white folks call people like you and me in private? Niggas, dogs. Niggas. Hey, hey, hey. Ever heard you talk like that since we were in college? Well, I'm sorry, man. Maybe the last three nights have been a little bit much. I got a board meeting. I got to go reassure the white folks. Let's go get some meat, okay? Okay. Too, baby. This is Uncle Tom, Commander in Chief of your Black Freedom Fighters in North America, bringing you the latest news from your fighting black underground. Hang on, brothers and sisters. Liberation is near. In just a few minutes, at precisely three o'clock, we will demolish the lavish offices of the mayor of white Chicago. Because we don't have a mayor, even if they do count our votes several times to elect him every four years. Remember, brothers, in spite of the lies about an assassination attempt on the mayor, which will appear in the white press, that this time we blew the mayor's office at night when he was at home to announce the beginning of our war of liberation. I dedicate this program to the National Guard, 
but we're fresh out of hillbilly music. And according to the press and television, the guard spends all his time playing basketball with the kids and helping old ladies cross the street. But we know better, don't we? We know about that 14-year-old girl, the trigger-happy guardsman, shot last night, and the people they beat up, and the black businesses they destroyed, don't we? It's almost time. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Blast off. And the mayor's office is now air conditioned, courtesy of the Black Freedom Fighters of Chicago. And the message is this pigs and the National Guard have to go immediately, if not sooner. If they have they've left by midnight Sunday, we will kick them out. Whitey, go home. We don't want you in our neighborhood either. And we will control our nation. We will leave when things are back to normal. With them at the bottom and us at the top. Colonel Evans, would you care to comment on charges of brutality by the guard? If they obeyed the law, we wouldn't be here. They'll get what they ask for. But there has been no brutality by the guard. Colonel, what about the threats by the freedom fighters that kicked the guard out of the neighborhood? They said midnight tonight. It is now 1230, which tells us exactly what we think of their threats. It's also time to put an end to this conference. I have a report to work on. Good night and thank you, gentlemen and ladies. just killed your last white man. He die. My people attack. You don't scare me none, you snakey Indian.
I just met the most marvelous bunch of niggers. <laughs> the, the most marvelous bunch of You get him? Due to increased fighting in Chicago, the president has ordered a brigade from the 82nd Airborne into the war-torn south side to reinforce the beleaguered National Guard under heavy attack by black guerrillas since late last week. This is Pat Fennell, Chicago. You've been here since the beginning, Carstairs. How does it look to you? General, it couldn't be worse. We have elite troops out here now against untrained black fanatics. The whole thing should be over before the weekend. Those troops are facing a highly trained underground guerrilla army. They have military weapons and they know how to use them. The commander of those elite troops insists he can put this thing down within a few days. You disagree? Yes, sir, I do. They're a first class fighting unit. You've prepared an options book. Yes, sir. And? We have three. Root them out one by one, starve them out by siege, total evacuation of the black population. Evacuation? Now, the first is too costly in lives and equipment. Neither evacuation nor siege would work. Why not? General, we sealed off the ghetto for three days last week. It paralyzed the city. Paralyzed Chicago? Chicago is more dependent on black labor than one would think. 90% of the garbage collectors are colored. 60% of the hospital workers are colored. 60% of the bus drivers and 80% of the postal workers. So although the concentration, the detention camps occurring under the 1950 Subversion Act already, we can't put them to immediate use. Your recommendation? We can end it alone, sir. Yes? The Russians obviously have a top agit prop man here. Find him, destroy him, and you have disorganized, ignorant Negroes to deal with. Cut off the head and the snake dies. Exactly. All right, Carstairs, get right on it. I'm going back to Washington. Get back to me by tomorrow noon. Honey, I'm going back to Washington. Why don't you amuse yourself here for a few days? A little shopping. Be back Sunday, huh? Sure, baby. You can find something to do in Chicago. But how do you know how to find me? I looked in the phone book. Yeah, well, you look great. But what are you doing in Chicago? I'm here with my sponsor. Hustling anymore. Got me a steady scene. Be a little bit um, freakish, like black skin. But the money's good. Got me some property. You know it. I do. 
Yeah. You used to work for him. You know, you his nigger. All the time, he'd be saying, if all of us niggers was like you, wouldn't be no trouble. First, I thought he was talking about somebody else. So? So they had to get Uncle Tom. Well, what makes you think I know anything about uh, Uncle Tom? I'm not saying you do, but... You know Chicago and I don't. Yeah, but uh, what am I supposed to do? Warn him. Tell him they have to kick ass and they ain't playing. One thing. Why are you sticking your neck out? I'm black, ain't I? Who's in charge? Carstairs. What are they up to? They plan to get inside, find out who this Uncle Tom is, and kill him. Cut off the head, and the snake dies. Do they know who Uncle Tom is? They think he's some guy from Russia. They would. You want me to see what else I can find out? No. Wait a minute. Two can play at this infiltration game. Find out all you can, but don't pry. I'll have somebody contact you in Washington. Baby, be very careful. And don't contact me again unless I get to Washington. <laughs> Should you feel threatened by the freedom fighters? Because I am, and you are too. How? You know how. Look, all the progress we've made over the last few years will be wiped out if this thing isn't stopped soon. I heard even your foundation is on its way out. Well, no. They decided to increase the budget and the staff. Yeah. Uh. Well, my husband was dismissed from the hospital, and he was the first and only Negro on a white hospital staff in the city. Well, what is the connection between your husband and the freedom fighters? Damn, that is the whole point innocent and decent people are suffering because of niggas who know nothing but hate and revenge and it's all a niggas fault right look don't romanticize those people dan they're not beautiful only by contrast dan those freedom fighters are murderers hey listen it didn't figure to be long before those niggas realized that you don't have no wind throwing a brick at somebody with a gun dan whose side are you on Your side. We're in the same bag. Making the best of a bad scene. I think he's mixed up with those black freedom fighters. Dad, you gotta be kidding. I am sure of it. We were talking and I don't know, he just for a minute he was like he used to be. It was something else when he was in college. And that was before all this became fashionable. He was defending those animals. 
and then he caught himself. And he said all the right things, but it just wasn't him. It just wasn't the man I know. Hey. Perfect source for intelligence. Gig takes him all over the ghetto. I'll check it out. Pete, I am doing the right thing. Come on. Just put your coat down right there. Come on. <laughs> what is this, Dawes? Come on, Uncle Tom. Come on! Uncle what? Uncle Tom, up against the wall. Come on, against the wall. Spread your feet out, come on. Come on. Hey, easy. Hey. What is this, some kind of joke, man? Well, yeah, that's a joke. The joke is on me. I've been looking all over for Uncle Tom, and here you are under my nose. Cool Dan Freeman, hey, only digging sports cars and bread, good clothes and chicks. Come Beautiful on. cover, man. Hey, when I think about it, I mean, really think about it. Now, would I uh, risk all of this for that? Yeah, well, I don't have to worry about that, man. I got enough evidence to take you in, and that's what I'm going to do. What evidence? Oh, them tapes, man. Them Uncle Tom propaganda tapes that you can't spread around the ghetto. Well, I listen to them over and over again, and it's you, Dan. It's your voice. You gotta be crazy. Well, we'll see if a voice print proves whether I'm crazy or not. Now what? Now what? Well, the scene is over. But well, one thing, one thing. Are you working with the communists like they say? Who's behind you? How come there gotta be somebody behind me? Oh, come on, man, don't put me on. No, no. The FBI says it's the most sophisticated underground movement in the Western Hemisphere. The work of an expert. Uh-huh, an expertise is white man's monopoly, right, Dawes? Well, I am an expert. I spent five years flunking to become an expert. This gun makes me an expert. You big man with that gun and that badge. You know, Dawes, you want to have it both ways. You want to pat on your head from Whitey, and you want to love and respect your people. But you can't be with your people without betraying that badge. And you can't be a cop without betraying your people, you hypocrite. You think nobody else feels the way you do? You think you're the only nigga with the sense of an outrage? Well, then hit back. Join us. We can use you. We got undercover people on the force. On the force? That's right. But Who? Nobody with your rank. Come on, join us, Tom. I and mean, you're using kids. Who else am I going to involve? People like you and me? Uh-uh. The kids are our only hope. And I got to them before they got jailed or killed or turned into Dawson's. And now they'll do anything to be free. Who said you were free, man? Well, Dawes, even on the wrong end of your gun, I'm a lot freer than you are. It's Dawson. Hey, man. Dawson's your main man. You know, that would be like me killing Dad. Yeah. And maybe one day you'll have to kill Daddy 
Or him, you. You think we're playing games, killing white strangers? There are a lot of Dawsons out there, and some of them will try to stop us. But anybody gets between us and freedom has got to go. Now, that's anybody. You got the airborne out there now. If 40% of those troops are black, maybe they'll help us, and maybe they won't. But in the meantime, if you hesitate with any one of them because he's black, just once, you be one dead cobra. Now, if you ain't ready to pay them kind of dues, now you get out and go back to doing nothing. But don't tell me who I killed and what it cost me to do it. Now, get him out of here. Get him out. Right, uh... It is now conditional, Red. All fighters in the field. You alert our groups everywhere. And remember, don't quit until you either win or you die. outbreak in the black section of Oakland brings to a total of eight the number of uprisings by black guerrillas in cities across the nation. The president has declared a state of national emergency. the door. The controversial best-selling novel now becomes a shocking screen reality. The story of the first black agent in the CIA. Whoever they select will be the best-known spy since 007. Their first mistake was letting him in. And let me congratulate you on being the first Negro officer in the Central Intelligence Agency. Their worst mistake was letting him out. Really want to mess with Whitey? I can show you how. For five years, he was their token Negro. Freeman, you people must serve. For five years, he kept his cool. Man, you just don't belong. I think you'd be happier with a mop in your hands. Like your mama. And in return, they taught him how to spy. <laughs> how to fight. <laughs> How to kill. For five years, he was the spook who sat by the door. And then... He turned gangs of ghetto kids into a highly trained guerrilla army. We live off the land. We match technology with spontaneity and improvisation. Men against machines, brains against computers. Now, if you don't think it can work, you check out Algeria, Kenya, Korea, and Iran. Can you dig it? He 
turned a summer riot into a revolution. This is not about hate white folks. It's about love and freedom enough to die or kill for it if necessary. He turned the American dream into a nightmare. Yesterday, a novel. Today, a movie. The spook who sat by the door. In Mayor's office, now air conditioned. Courtesy of the Black Freedom Fighters of Chicago. The spook who sat by the door. The story of the first black agent in the CIA. You people must serve. For five years, he was their token Negro. And then, he turned the American dream into a nightmare. The spook who sat by the door. Rated PG.